Hallelujah. Well, if you have your Bibles this morning, Ephesians 6, 18. Ephesians 6, 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for. Now watch what he says in the last part of this verse. And supplication for all saints. Hallelujah. Now I I hear Holy Spirit saying to my heart, and this is very important. Because of the increase in the tax. against the people of God attacks in the area of disease sicknesses attacks in the area of increase in accidents attacks on the believer's mind, perception, and understanding. One of the reasons that the Lord is so coming upon you in this day and in this hour, which Holy Spirit has emphasized before, and that is to help you watch. There are people in his army. There are people in the army of the Lord. That because of the multi-levels of statue and position and spiritual authority. In the kingdom of God. It is those who are in higher positions with greater level of authority let me say it to you this way in the angelic rank there are those who have greater authority in the angelic rank there, have, there are those who carry greater power in the angelic rank than others And it is up to that and and it is up to that warrior, those that lead the battle, to take care of his troops. To hear orders from Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is the great administrator. Holy Spirit reveals secrets of the enemy. He reveals secrets of men's heart Holy Spirit is the one that construct that instructs the war that goes on in the heavenly realm in the angelic realm just as in any in, in, even in this realm this natural realm things are known based upon a need to know and that need to know it's based upon, again, a hierarchy of authority. So, an angel, one who is in authority over his troops, can get instruction from Holy Spirit, but that angel, his ability to empower his troops to fight is limited, greatly limited based upon those 
who are watching based upon those who are persevering and supplicating for all saints amen God has not had the help that he has needed to win this war not because of his inability it's been because of our inability. It's because of our failure to want what he wants. It's because of our failure to desire what he desires. It's because of our failure to give ourselves to him. To pursue him. We don't know heaven's agenda. We don't know how to pray as we ought. We need Holy Spirit. We need Him. And because we do not have as yet the capacity to hold the degree of glory that the Lord Jesus Christ has long awaited to pour out on His saints, He has, He has, He has only this. Um, this ability to pour his burden upon those that will give themselves to him to release prayer incense to, in, to increase the angelic realm's capacity to win every battle and because that has been limited that ability has been limited because God has had to depend on humans. Amen. Who are up and down in their desires. Amen. Who are up and down in their priorities. Amen. And who have not ultimately given themselves to him. Amen. So he can pour his burdens upon them. But we have great cause to rejoice. Amen. Because of the times and seasons that we have stepped in, God, our Father, is giving us help in the way of spreading that responsibility. within the ranks of his saints although the church at large will not move on with him many will not move on with him in the area of doctrine many will not move on with him in the area of principles But God has already calculated. Our Father all way already knows. And he have known from the foundation of the world those that will move on with him. The remnant that will give themselves to him. See, God has purposely waited to give this aspect of himself to the church. He will take advantage of the failure and the disobedience of the church and the level of darkness that will be in this earth realm. He will take advantage of it. Because in this great darkness will we learn our greatest lesson. That we are nothing without him. That we never ever will be anything without him. And without him, this battle over the flesh, this battle over this earth realm, this battle over the souls of men 
cannot be one without him. And so in the greatest time of earth's darkness, the Father is able to bring forth his children. You have to understand it. It has always been decreed that it will be in the midst of the greatest darkness that man has ever known. So God has waited, waited. Unfortunately, to the, dismi to the, dis the demise of many, not because of the Father's fault, it is mankind's failure to listen to him. It is the church's failure to obey him to their, to their demise. Again, not because of the Father's fault. The word has prophesied. Isaiah told us in Isaiah 60 that in our day, great darkness shall cover the earth and the people. But in the midst of that great darkness, a people will emerge and they will shine brighter than the sun. See, so brother, sister, it has always been in God's timing. Nothing has taken him by surprise. Amen. Seemingly, the fall of the religious church, amen, and the rise of the Antichrist has not taken God by surprise. It has been prophesied in our darkest hour will be our greatest hour it has long been prophesied so we stand now you and I we stand now on the precipice of the greatest battle in church history amen we stand now upon the precipice of our of our immortal our mortality will be swallowed up by immortality amen listen our immortality is at stake do you hear me our immortality is at stake Well, we will swallow up death in victory. Amen. Well, we will capture death that's had a free reign upon the planet. Killing at will because of this disobedience and the ignorance of men. Amen. So God has set back and waited for the fullness of time. The fullness of time. The watchers in heaven have watched for a time and a season that a generation will emerge. A generation will emerge unlike any other generation that will have the qualities Amen. And the desire to want him more than any other generation. There have been a few here and there scattered throughout generations that have reached this point. But there has not been enough to bring this thing to an end. But we have come, as the scripture says, unto Mount Zion. When we come to Mount Zion, brother and sister, it is the signal, amen, for us that this generation is about to come to an end. What the Father has long awaited for, what the Lord Jesus Christ died for, is about to come to an end. There is a people on the earth now. There is a generation on the earth now that he can use, that he can pour him, 
himself into. You hear what I'm saying? God never ran from a challenge. He never shook from a challenge. We're now at the point where the millennials, the world calls them the snowflakes. They are at their greatest rebellion. They have tasted of the greatest level of darkness. And this is the time that God has chosen, that he will snatch that generation from the claws of the enemy and he will awaken them. He will awaken them seemingly overnight. And they will rise up with a zeal that the enemy has never seen in a generation. Listen, track with the thinking of God. The enemy has thought he has won. He's thought he's won. He's played his hand as usual foolishly. God has known something that he has not known. What he has factored out is the sovereignty of Almighty God. The sovereignty of Almighty God. He has looked at the works of man's hands and has failed to keep his eyes on the hearts of men. It is men's heart, their yieldedness, and their willingness that God has long awaited for. Amen. Has long awaited. And there is a people now who's ready, who is willing to give themselves to God. Mind you, and this is sad, mind you, it is only a remnant. This breaks the Lord Jesus Christ's heart. It is only a remnant. But he has always known. He has always known that it would be a remnant. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? When God brought the children of, out of Egypt, the children of Israel out of Egypt, six plus million people, God knew. It did not take him by surprise. But notice this. It did not stop him from trying. That's what I love so much about God. God will continue to try, knowing that men will reject him, knowing that men will keep saying no to him. God will still continue to try to give himself to mankind. And right at the border of Kadesh Barria, when six plus million Jews came down and it was time for them to decide whether we will go in or whether we won't. What they were saying is, God, we don't want you. They didn't understand this. But it was not God's failure that they did not understand. They could have been prepared just like Joshua and Caleb were prepared. You hear what I'm saying to you? They could have dealt with their heart just like Joshua and Caleb did. Brother, sister, God took them through the wilderness to sift out those who were not worthy. It was not God that determined their worthiness. They themselves determined their worthiness or lack thereof. God took them through the wilderness. Understand, and I've said this to you before, they're in the natural. You need certain ingredients to make a cake and for the cake to be tasteful. You can leave out different ingredients. The cake will still be made, but the question of whether or not you can eat it, <laughs> will it taste like anything? There is an ingredient that is needed in the making of overcomers. And that ingredient is suffering. That ingredient is hard times. That ingredient is difficulty. This is why the last test you must overcome is the mark of the beast. In the middle of great darkness, this is why, brother, sister, there will be no rapture, there will be no catching away until the man of sin is revealed this is why 
So this is why God took Israel through the wilderness. When he could have took them straight, amen, into the land. He did not have to take them by way of the mountain. He did not have to take them by way of the Red Sea. But for God to pour himself upon you, God must first reveal your heart to you. Oh, if he does not, and you do not decide to separate the darkness that is within you from the light that is within you, if you do not decide that and God pour his glory upon you, all he will get in turn is another Lucifer will, in, will, 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 will in, inevitably lead a rebellion against righteousness. Amen. And that will not happen. That will not happen. So God has tarried. He has waited. And he has watched. He has put beings around the earth's universe to watch for a generation that will arise. That will fight for the separation of darkness within them. And the light that is within them. And that that generation will be chosen to bring an end to all things. Our generation has been chosen to bring an end to all things. To bring an end to evil. To bring an end to Satan's rule. In this realm and in other worlds. To bring an end to him. Amen. So this is time for rejoicing. This is time for rejoicing. Now you must determine. You must determine. Will you finish your race? You must determine. A runner pace himself when he's in a marathon. And he picks up his pace when the finish line is in view. Brother, sister, the finish line is in view. And this is the part, this is the sad part about all of this. The finish line is in view and the bulk of the church has quit running. The bulk of the church thinks it has arrived. The bulk of the church think they are ready for this glory, this sovereign act of God they call revival. But I got news for you. God will not pour out this new wine on the bulk of the church because the bulk of the church has not separated the darkness from itself. It is not. It will not be poured out on the bulk of the church. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Are you listening to me? When Jesus came out of the grave and walked the earth for 40 days, God always sift through the crowd. And the crowd is never chosen. Never. It's always a remnant. Always a remnant. It's offered to the crowd, but the crowd never accepts what God offers. Only a remnant. It was offered to six plus million Jews to be priests under God. Come into a land that was riddled with perversion and darkness. Canaan's land is a type of where our planet is going. Do you hear what I'm saying? It is not by chance that all around the world homosexuality gender neutrality is taking its place see all around the world it is Lucifer's plan it has always been his plan to release perversion filth homosexuality as such on the planet it has always been his plan 
This again lets you know why we are in the last days. It speaks to that. Look at the book of Revelation. And Jesus told you, he told you, just as it was in the days of Noah, it will be at my return. He told you that. How was it in the days of Noah? Because we don't have a whole lot of uh, 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 writings concerning it. Only Moses said this. They were married and given in marriage. Well, what was it like? It was like Sodom and Gomorrah, brother and sister. Perversion. No one was satisfied. They burned in their lust. The filth. The planet was like an open sewer. I want to paint a picture for you. Before Jesus returns, there will be such a level of filth on this earth. Do you know what I'm saying to you? Your hearts must be prepared against what is about to be done dumped on mankind such a level of filth when men start passing laws that it's alright to marry animals and they put it on TV bestiality you said it'll never go there it is going there you hear me it is going there before Jesus return there will be such a level of filth on this planet the Bible warned us. It's in the book of Revelation. The enemy let us know he will use the most perverted, the most least in authority in his kingdom. That's the spirits of perversion. This is why in the scriptural in Ephesians, the sins that Paul lists when the works of the flesh, the first ones that he mentions are all sexual sins. All sexual sins. There is a rise in perversion. And the people as a whole will accept it. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? This is why, again, this is why there is this big push in gender neutrality. And they're teaching it in your schools where your children are going. There's no such thing as male or female. In other words, if you decide today to make yourself a female, and if you're a male, then you can call yourself one. No, you don't have to go through all of the changes and all of this stuff. You don't have to do that. That's where they're moving to. You hear what I'm saying to you? That's where they're moving to. And the enemy has did what the church has failed to do. The enemy in America started this in the 60s when it took control of the school system. And now we are reaching an apex now. Well, this, they are openly now, unashamedly now doing it. Why? Because it is so entrenched. And we have people in power who are dedicated to that agenda. But here's the grace of God. God in America is exposing what evil men have been doing. Now listen to me. In that revealing, it might push us to a revolution. In the revealing of this evil. Brother, sister, it has not yet come out the evil that men in power who have been elected who have took our nation from a republic to a democracy our nation is not a democracy it is a republic but listen to all of the politicians they say democracy it is not a democracy it is a republic but they have been running it like a democracy in a democracy the majority wins uh-uh. In a republic, you cannot supplant the, the rights of the one. That's a republic. But they've turned the thing upside down. And if it wasn't for God, we would continue down the sewer that they placed us in. But God is battling on one front. 
on the political front. It is time for the church now to start battling on the spiritual front. Or we will lose this nation. We will lose this nation. Men are fighting on every front. Why can't men and women see the deception and the level of cruelty in the White House? Why can't they see it? You have educated people who get on TV and fight for this crap that is going on in our nature, in our nation. And the church just sits back. And many in the church take sides with it. Brother, sister, we are in a battle, not just for your children, but we're in a battle for this nation. You hear what I'm saying? Listen, dark times will come. We cannot stop that. But whether how much of our inheritance we maintain, we can determine that. Our inheritance is the souls of men. Do you hear me? The souls of men. If we do not, the church, the remnant, if we do not fight through this darkness and take our place as the watchers that we are called and supplicate for all saints, why? Because there are those that are out there who are called to this army who have not yet enlisted. Listen, your kids and your kids' kids, they won't enlist. They are being drafted. They are being drafted. That's the sovereign work of God. The enemy knows it. This is why he has done and released the level of evil against their generation. But in the greatest level of darkness, God will bring forth the greatest level of light from that generation. They are being drafted. Amen. But you, of my generation, you must enlist. You must enlist. You must agree to what God is doing. You must give yourself to what God is doing. Unfortunately, as I said before, those who are, are, those who are going in have already been marked. This is where we are. This is where we are. We don't have the time needed now to bring the bulk of the church into the place God needs her to be. There is no time. Many have already chosen their position. They took their stands. Listen, this again, this is an heart thing. And this is what God has been watching the heart. He has been waiting again for a generation whose heart is right. Who will separate from themselves darkness from light. That he may sovereignly and again, this is what the enemy has not factored in. He thought God would sit back and let us destroy ourselves. He miscalculated. As he always does. God has been waiting for those that will separate themselves from the masses. From that which is not like him. We have it again all through scripture. The last example of it that we have 
is when Jesus was caught up. When Jesus left. And the two men that stood there said, why are you looking at this Jesus? The same way he left, he will come. The same way. What were they saying? The same thing Jesus said as it was in the days of Noah. This is how it will be when I return. So, these men said the same thing. What has happened since him coming out of the grave, it will be the same way. Now, we emphasize the part, we've emphasized the part that Jesus got on a cloud and he went up. But the part we have not emphasized was when Jesus came out of the grave, there were other graves that were open as well. The reason Joseph told his kin, don't leave my bones in Egypt, take them to Israel. You make sure you take them to Israel. Joseph saw this day that Jesus will come out of the grave and he will get up and come out with him. The moment Jesus closed his eyes and stepped out of his body, the earth shook and the saints came out of the grave. And they went into the city and started preaching. The Bible said, so Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the 12 patriarchs, they went into the city and started preaching about Jesus. The men said the same way, the same thing is going to happen. The saints of God, the army of God, it's coming to the earth. Brother, sister, it's not just the angelic realm that is invading our planet. Remember, we have come to Mount Zion. Spirits of just men made perfect. An innumerable company of angels. Mount Zion is coming to the earth. It's coming inside of you, Mount Zion. God is taking his place in a people. He have long awaited this day, but he have again have waited for those who separated light from darkness within him. And the enemy had not factored in again. God sovereignly doing this God is sovereignly completing what you could not complete God is sovereignly crushing in your life what you could not crush God is sovereignly extracting from your life what you could not extract he's sovereignly doing it and the enemy has not factored this in. He thought there would not be a people that will meet God's timetable that will be ready. Do you hear me? God is bringing you to this place, brother, sister, because this war, it's about to greatly increase. Greatly. The angelic realm, they are ready. The only thing that is not in place yet is the remnant. The watchers, you. To finish this war, there must come a level of prayer 
spiritual warfare in the church that has never been. Again, as I said in the beginning, this burden has been on a few intercessors. But the Lord is fitting to put it on the masses. I'm talking about the remnant, not the entire church. Again, not because he don't want to. He can't. He can't. So on this remnant. And again, his purpose again, ultimately, is for you to watch. See? Because ultimately it is your responsibility as saints of God to lead the war. To lead the battle. Listen. Without sufficient prayer, without sufficient incense, the angelic realm is not successful. The angels of the Lord cannot win the battle. And for God to capture this planet, the masses, and to reap a harvest through the coming kingdom... He must take control somewhat of the spirit realm around this planet. And that's only done through the angelic war. And that is only done by the saints through persevering in prayer. Watching. Watching. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Your prayer life is about to greatly change. Greatly change. Calling you, Holy Spirit, calling you upon the wall spiritually to watch. Now remember, the Holy Spirit is the orchestrator, is the administrator. The Holy Spirit releases instructions. The Holy Spirit releases the burden of the Lord. The Holy Spirit releases the burden of the Lord. And the Holy Spirit awakens you, calls you to the wall to persevere and supplicate for saints. See, because... There is a level, there is a part of this army that is the enemy is going to try to take out. What army is that? Your children. But especially those that are two years old and downward. There's a part of that army that he's going to try to take out. Amen. Because he knows that part of a part of that army. See, no one looks at a child as being an enemy. The child with the, with the baby face and the goo 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 goo. In any country, right? You send in anything else in any country, it can be construed as an enemy right in South Africa Africa, Boko Raton takes little boys and put them in the army and make murderers out of them but no one does that to little babies little little children the enemy saw God move upon the children in Moses day and he killed them all The enemy saw God move upon the children in Jesus' day. And Herod sent men to kill children two years old and downward. God's going to pay him back. The enemy knows it. And so is this, this youth, little babies, 
Psalms 8, out of the mouths of babes and sucklings, thou hast ordained perfect praise. They're going to release perfect praise, little babes, children, all over the world, in Buddhist homes, in Muslims' homes, you know, in backslidden Christians' homes. Little bitty babies are going to go Google Gaga, and they're going to release the power of God and set people free. That's the sovereign work of God. This is already happening. A friend of mine told me <laughs> that a woman wrote to his ministry and said that he, she had a little girl about 15, 16 years old. She didn't know the girl was demon, demon was possessed, you know, that, that's keeping her child. You know, because the girl wasn't slobbing all over the mouth or whatnot, but she had demons in her. And so the mother said she had came down and said she heard the baby crying. And the little girl had went and got the baby. So the mother was making the milk for the baby. And she said the little girl was holding, holding the baby. And so she turned and the little baby just opened her mouth. And she looked and she saw this dog cloud come out of the girl that was keep holding the baby. Come out of and the girl scream, and the dark cloud went through the wall. The mother said, it wasn't me. I didn't do a thing. I wasn't thinking about Jesus. It was right at the time this baby would <laughs> out of the mouths of babes and sucklings. The young Hindu girl was set free. The enemy knows this. So the enemy is going after a part of God's army. And he needs his watchers. See, this is a part of the army that cannot fight for itself. That cannot pray for itself. Amen. So God needs you, the remnant, to persevere and to watch for all saints. This is what we've come to now. We've come to the part that we're battling for those who are in the army of the Lord that cannot battle for themselves. You know what I'm saying? We're in this transition now. So there's something must happen to your prayer life. Amen. Amen. A wind is blowing. A wind is blowing. Listen. We see in the New Testament. Every time the saints prayer life changed, what were they doing? They were praying. <laughs> Wasn't it? They were praying. In Acts 2, before the Holy Spirit came, the wind was blowing, their prayer life changed. They went from their mother language to diverse kinds of tongues. We went to Acts 5. The saints came back together after they were disciples were beaten, and they were all praying and worshiping God. And what happened? The prayer life changed again. The earth shook under their feet. Amen. A manifestation of God's power rumbled. The prayer life changed. What were they doing? Praying and worshiping God. Right? When Peter was thrown into prison and they were going to kill him the next day, the saints were in the room. They were all praying. Right? A wind blew. Their prayer life changed. God went into the prison. Went into the prison and brought Peter out of prison. See, your prayer life, if you're praying, if praying is a part of your life, a wind is blowing. Your prayer life is about to change greatly, immensely. You know what I'm saying? The angelic war 
the angelic army is all in place. They're ready. The saints of God, the cloud of witnesses, they are ready. They're in place. Amen. Now God is fin to put you in the place that you need to be. He's about to engage you. And when he does, this war would greatly change. Greatly change. The enemy, listen, the enemy knows all of this. And he has been working to no end. To make that remnant as small as possible. He know he can't stop it. We have too many. We have too many examples in scripture. He knows it. He can't stop it. So the question is, really, will you become a statistic? Amen. Will he deter you? Will he distract you from the greatest battle and the greatest victory we will ever experience? But it will be in the midst of the greatest darkness that we have ever seen. Amen. The greatest darkness. Irrespect, guess what? We're going to win. I said, irrespect, we're going to win. The question is, will you be on the side that win? That's the question. Will you be on the side that win? Will you do what's necessary to finish? Amen? Stand. Close your eyes for a moment. Let the Holy Spirit talk to you. With every word that is released, decisions must always be made. But there is conviction. Choices must be made. A wrong decision can set our life on a course. We may never return from. But a right decision based from a question that is put to us, our thought life. will determine 
how we will position ourselves mentally and spiritually for the task ahead. The Holy Spirit never wants us deceived. This is why he's always bringing tests into our life. One of the major reasons for a test is to reveal our heart. Where we really stand versus where we wish we stood. And once our position, our heart is revealed, it is detrimental that we make course corrections. That we enlist Holy Spirit's help to chart a new course, to take a different path. to give him that which has been exposed and allow him to pull it from our life. So that in the day of trouble, in the day of deep darkness, our faith will not fail. We will not be double-minded. Our heart will not deceive us. But we will hold fast the confidence of our faith. So Holy Spirit always does his part when he is allowed to. Always. But when you stop and think about it, the almighty, powerful God of the universe his hands can be tied. His mouth can be muzzled. When the will of a person resists him. <clears throat> this is not the time to resist. This is the time to yield. Yield to one's purpose. Yield to one's destiny. <coughs> Yield to one's calling. Yield to the reason in which you were born and created. By and for his pleasure. The scripture says, what does it profit? A man or woman. To gain the whole world. That means to live out their dreams, their desires. Accomplish everything that they ever wanted. And lose their soul. What will a man give in exchange for it? Is there anything today that 
you are putting before your soul. Only you can answer that question. With every eye closed, every head bowed. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. Heaven is never the problem. The problem is always with us. Heaven is always willing. We're the ones that is unstable in waiting. I pray today <clears throat> with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ will simply pull back the scales from every eye that hears me today. Allow them to see The enemy do not want them to see. Allow them to hear what the enemy do not want them to hear. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I release this now over them. take authority over every weapon that is formed against them today. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, just lift up both hands. Thank God for his word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We thank you today. We declare that we are good ground. And the enemy will not be able to steal what has been sown. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let them know, Lord, the battle will come. The fight will intensify. The war will take place. Whether they take sides or not. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Some will win and some will lose. But we want to win. We will win. Thank you, Father. In the name of the King. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Well, God is good. I pray you got something out of that. Turn around and greet someone before you go.